We are so appreciative of all of you coming out tonight to support the Jana Murray Foundation and to hear all this amazing music. My name is Marissa Vasiri, and I am president and founder of the Jana Murray Foundation. I started the organization in 2012, shortly after my sister, Jana, died by suicide. We grew up right here in State College, and um, she just was this amazing young woman who had this vibrant personality and this zest for life, and just what, somebody I truly wanted to be like when I grew up. However, with all of this, she did courageously battle a mental illness for much of her life. It was uh, a, a mental illness that would often trick her into believing that she was unworthy or incapable of being loved. A mental illness, a, a brain that tricked her into believing that there was no hope. And we know that is not the case for anyone. And from all of us on the outside looking at her, we could see that light that shined within her, um, especially uh, when the people around her let her strip off those masks and just be the person that she was. When there were adults in her life that cared uh, so much about her and worked with her and met her where she was at to help her succeed and flourish. And she did extremely well when she had those creative outlets, art, music, theater, writing, all of those allowed her to really express who she was and, and the difficult journeys that she was going on. And after she took her life, I just wanted to carry that on. I knew that we needed to take action and to make mental health and suicide prevention be something that we can talk about. And you know, even though it's not a, a, a comfortable conversation, that it's one that's so, so important so that everyone knows that there is help and there is hope. And so the Jana Marie Foundation harnesses the power of creative expression and dialogue to spark conversations and promote mental wellness, especially among young people and their communities. Each year, we reach hundreds of adolescents, giving them a voice, empowering them to believe in themselves, and most importantly, love themselves for who they are. And beyond that, we work with parents and teachers and community members to make sure um, that they know what young people are faced with today and how best to support them and have those courageous conversations. The biggest thing we want people to know is that it's okay to not be okay, but it's not okay to not ask for help. There are so many people here in this community, as you can tell by tonight, who are willing to reach out that hand and be that person that they can lean on and talk to. So um, we hope that you are enjoying tonight and know that if you ever need help, that there is a place that you can go and there are places uh, and people who will listen. Um, so if, if tonight has touched you in any way, we ask you to please support the foundation, um, whether it be through opening your wallet and giving a donation or volunteering your heart through, uh, or donating your heart through volunteer work. Um, all of it matters to us and we thank you so much for being here tonight. the privilege of introducing um, someone who is very near and dear to me, um, probably uh, the, the person who has understood us the best when we were growing up and whose love for music gave Jana uh, just a, 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 somebody that she could connect to in, in an incredible way. And so I'm going to introduce my dad, Al Vasiri, to come on out. Well, good evening, and I want to thank Marissa first for the, the kind introduction. Uh, thank her also for all the work that she's done to launch Jana Marie Foundation. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us on this very special occasion. Uh, I'd like to call out Ken and Jenny and all these incredible musicians who are working tonight, the technicians behind the scenes. This is a great evening, and you ain't seen nothing yet. There's a lot more to come. Right. Um, on June 18th, 2011, a little after 11 p.m., we had a knock on the door. And standing outside was a State College police detective in his suit, and a, behind him, a couple of feet, was a uniformed state police officer. 
They asked me to get my wife, they asked us to sit down, and they gently informed us that we had lost our daughter Jana. She was 30 at the time. At that moment, we joined a circle to which no one wishes to belong, and that's the circle of parents who've lost a child to suicide. Not long after Jana passed, I received a call from a friend who, uh, not long before that, had lost his son. And among his words of kindness and compassion, he said to me that, you know you'll never get over this, and you know you'll never get past it, but you will learn to go on. And then he said, if you, if you want to go on in a positive way, then you have to remember the positive things, the positive things about Jana, her, her smile, her infectious laugh, uh, her creativity, her zest for life, her zest for learning, and, and we've worked very hard to do that. But he also said that we had to find a way to channel the negative energy of grief. And he was right on both counts. And the way that we've been able to channel that negative energy of grief has really been through Marissa's work with Jana Marie Foundation and our ability to help her in that, in that endeavor. Through the foundation, we reach, as Marissa said, we reach uh, adolescents to, to help them uh, deal with mental health issues, to help them build resilience. Uh, we're working across the community to build support for mental health. Uh, we're working uh, very hard on suicide prevention efforts. And as part of the efforts that we had, we had a, a meeting actually in Julian Woods uh, at the home of Deb Fisher, who was here in the audience. And we were working on a stopper. That stopper is called Play. It's actually at Slow Library right now. And it's in honor of artists and particularly, particularly local artist John Mangan. And we were working on the stopper and then walked this guy uh, with a guitar case. And he unpacked the guitar and he started to play. And I leaned over and whispered to Nancy, he's not bad. And, and she said, no, he's, he's pretty good, right? And then he started to talk and he said, uh, yeah, I toured with Joe Cocker. Now, anyone here from the Woodstock generation? I mean, come on. Joe Cocker, how cool is that, right? To have toured with Joe Cocker. Uh, but then he also said that he too was part of that unfortunate circle of parents who had lost a child, his son Alex, to suicide. And as Ken and I began to talk and got to know each other a little bit, I, I shared with him some of the things that we do with Jana Marie Foundation and how often we encounter people who, because they are so concerned about loved ones, that they ask us, you know, what do we look for? I mean, how, how do we identify if they are having a problem? I and mean, what do they look like even over here? And I mentioned to Ken that uh, I had edited a video uh, tape that Jana had made when she was 13. And among her very many, many creative endeavors, uh, video journaling was one of the things that Jana loved to do. And, and by the way, it was before cell phones, so you remember the big old clunky VCRs and the book-sized cassettes and the big giant tripods with all the little knobs. Uh, but it was a joy for her to make videos and it was a joy for us to watch them. Uh, and so Ken asked me if I would share with you uh, one of those videos. And, and it's a video when Jana was 13, she was in eighth grade. And I share that with you so that you get a chance to know a little of, about Jana and who she was, at least at the age of 13. But more importantly, I share it with you because if you're ever wondering, is someone having a problem? What do they look like? I can tell you that they look like the person sitting next to you or the person in front of you or the person behind you. I can tell you they look like your spouse or your child or your friend or your neighbor or your colleague. I can tell you they look like a typical 13-year-old girl. And the thing is, if you think someone is having a problem, I implore you to reach out and try to help. Ask them if they're okay. See if there's something you can do. And if they need help, encourage them to reach out for help. There is help out there. Mental health is, issues are treatable. Suicide is preventable. But only if all of us in this room, all of us in this community, all of us in this world, begin to end the stigma that surrounds mental health, encourage people to get help when they need it, and do everything we can to permanently close membership in an unfortunate circle of people who lose a person to suicide. So uh, I leave you with Jana. Thank you.